Shalom, shalom. Uh, first thing and foremost, I'm going to give all praises and glory and honor as due to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakakodash. I'm going to give double honors to our elders and the apostles of the Great Millstone that rule well. Blessings and salutations to the whole elect. New in this gospel, broad lifting up the standard of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Uh, this is the Aki of Mahalaya coming back with another lesson. Lord, so will be edifying. Um, the po question was posed to me today. Uh, today about about the, uh, the feast of unleavened bread are we to get everything out of the house during the Passover or the next day well the thing of it is the feast of unleavened bread and the Passover is one and the same okay as we know that the Passover takes place on the 14th day of even in the first uh, month which is the month of Abib which is the technical new year according to the scriptures the 14th, 15th day, 14th to the 15th day, or 14th day of evening going into the 15th day, uh, which is the Passover, which we are to not have any leaven or anything that contains leaven in the form of foods or within your spirit, because it's really spiritual in all sense, because to be technically honest, how Shai already didn't atone for us over these high holy days, but the scriptures say that we're supposed to rehearse the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of the land. So we are to keep these feasts as an ordinance forever because this is our customs, okay? And this is to show you how we shy our faith and that we're trying to get in his good graces. So uh, the question posed, uh, when are we supposed to get the leaven out? Well, you want to have the leaven out of your house before the Passover starts because the Passover is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's all the one and the same. Okay, it's really called the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Passover it's just uh, the ceremony by title or just the, the, the name of the high holy day. But the entire week is really Passover slash the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Because it's, it's one and the same, okay? It's within the same ceremony, okay? So when you're celebrating one, you're celebrating the other as well by default. So um, just for you new brothers out there, you know, a few of you that may watch, um, it would be a wise thing to start going through your cabinets and start removing a little leaven as we progress to that day, because a lot of times when you try to rush things at the last minute, you end up forgetting shit. And, you know, I mean, we're rehearsing things happen. We can't do it perfectly. But, you know, in retrospect, like me, I'm going to start possibly maybe Friday or on the Shabbat getting things out of the house. You know, we're just kind of moving things outside of the house, whether putting it downstairs in the storage or putting it in my car, because, I mean, shit, food is hard to come by. So, you know, if you have can't afford to throw it away then don't don't be over righteous and throw it away but you want to get it out of your house so this is just a list of uh let me see here this is uh basically what contains leaven which just says leaven is usually present in breads cookies crackers cereals cakes pies and other baked goods it says it could be present in some candies in unexpected places but brewish yeast is inactive and it's not a leaven Okay, so get that. It says brewish yeast is inactive and it's not a leaven. Cream of tartar by itself is not a leavening agent because leaven is what causes the dough to rise. Okay, just like yeast. Like if you're making pizza, uh, you have flat bread, but if you put yeast in it, because yeast is like a living, uh, uh, I won't, it's like a living agent or a live agent. If you put a little yeast in it, then the entire lump becomes leaven. And this is how you get dough to rise. So like when you see your bread, your cookies, your cakes, that all has leavening in it, man, okay? And when you get very technical, you go through things like, okay, you may have power, you may have a seasoning salt, you may have particular seasonings, they may have leavening agents in it. But overall, you want to get all the shit, like cakes, cookies, you want to avoid fried chicken, you know, stuff like that. Unless you use like an oat-based flour, then that may be okay. But just to be on the safe side, um, it's best to just not fry anything as far as like... Um, Chicken and all that other stuff, drumsticks, you know, stay away from that stuff. You know, if you do like something like potatoes and stuff like that, like potatoes is a, uh, like, like a potato is like a, like a, oh, wait a minute. Potatoes is a, a, a yeast, I think. No, potatoes is a, uh, no, potatoes is a carb, salakia. It's a carb, you know, but like just getting the cakes, cookies and stuff out there that you want to start, you want to have that stuff out of the house by Passover. Okay. So let's go into the scriptures. Real quick, and uh, let's just get some understanding on it. So this is the book of uh, Exodus 34, and I'm going to start at, let's start at verses 25. It says, Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven, OK? 
okay? Neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of Passover be left until the morning, meaning that you need to have it ate all up or whatever you don't eat, dispose of it, okay? So when you go into the word leaven, right? The word leaven goes into the word, all right, it goes here. Uh, which means things leaven or leaven, leavened or leaven, right? And you look it up. It goes a cooking, a leavening agent, or rising agent, also called leaven or leavener, is in any one of the number of substances used in doughs, batters, case of foaming action that lightens and softens the mixture. An alternative or supplement to leavening agents is mechanical action by which air is incorporated. Leavening agents can be biological or synthetic chemical compounds, and the gas is produced is often carbon dioxide or occasional uh, hydrogen. Okay, leavening, like it says here, it says of bread made with yeast or other rising agents. It says leavened breads are forbidden during Passover. Okay, it says a substance, typically yeast, that is used in dough to make it rise, dough that is reserved from an earlier batch. In order to start a latter one for many or pervasive influence that modifies something or transport for the better. Okay. Cause of dough or bread to rise by adding yeast or another rising agent or premiate or modify transform to something. Okay. So when you get the term unleavened bread, basically unleavened bread is bread without uh, any leavening agent in it. You know, it's quick to make, you know, a couple of seconds, couple of minutes, you flip it, the boy, the, the, the oil, the butter. You be done with it. Flip flop. You're done with it. You know, like technically, like if you look at like a, a flour tortilla or like a tortilla, something like that, or like a flat, that's like considered almost like unleavened bread because there's no yeast in it. You know, so you want to abstain from eating cooks, cakey, mean cookies, cakes, crackers, you know all that shit. Okay, so it says, "Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven. Neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left until the morning." Okay. So from here, uh, Exodus 12, and I'm going to start at verses, let's start at verses um, 2. It says, this month should be unto you the beginning of months, and it should be the first month of the year unto you. So technically, we're in the first month of the year. Okay, the first month isn't December, it isn't January, February, when it's cold. We're actually in the beginning of months, and this is why the weather is breaking, because we're actually in the spring now. You know, spring forth, everything, life comes forth, which is the beginning. Okay. It says, speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying in the 10th month, or in the 10th day of this month, they should take it to them, every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house, taken according to the number of souls, that every man according to his eating should make your account for the lamb. And your lamb should be without blemish. A male of the first year, and you should take it out from the sheep or the goats. Now, if your brothers got farms, you know, and you can do this, then by all means. But from what it's looking like, we have to buy our lamb parts from the butcher, you know, that it's already chopped up, whether it be leg of lambs, lamb chops, lamb ribs, whatever you decide to have, right? And it says here, your lamb should be without blemish, a male of the first year, and you should take it out from the sheep or the goats, and you should keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel should kill it in the evening, okay? The 14th day of the same month is the Passover. And it says, and they should take the blood, because this is really a representation of Yahweh Shai being a Passover lamb. That's why when he got crucified, you notice when he was anointed, okay, and the affliction and, and the, uh, the burial, all of it foreshadowed the Passover. Or the Passover foreshadowed everything that Yahweh Shai went up or that went through within that particular week. Okay, when he was getting crucified because he's the ultimate Passover. So this whole high holy day, this one of the, the, mo the most important high holy day in Israel is basically, this is basically Yahweh Shai's day, man. You know, and, he, and, and it says, and they should take the blood and strike it upon the two side posts on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they should eat it. And that blood represents the protection, the blood that he shed. And it says, and they should eat the flesh and that night and roast, the fi and roast with fire and unleavened bread. And with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Okay, this is why we have what they call the horseradish, because it represents our affliction. And it says, eat it not raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roasted with fire, his head, his legs, and with the putins thereof. Now, we understand that we don't have the perfection here. We don't have whole lamb, so we just do the best we can. You get the lamb from the store, you grill it up, cook it, whatever you're going to do. You know, you make sure it's nice and good. 
and be done with it. You know, make sure you get a, a, a decent size amount so every brother can have their portion. Don't get too much. Don't get too little because, and realistically speaking, you don't want to have leftovers of this thing, you know. But it says here, and you should let nothing ever remain until the morning, which is the leftovers, that which remained of it until the morning, you should burn up a fire. So it's important that you proportion the portions that you get so you don't have an abundance because, I mean, honestly speaking, lamb ain't that cheap. And you end up getting a... Uh, a whole leg of lamb and you know you only feed three brothers when a whole leg of lamb can feed like six seven eight nine people you just wasted a lot of money because that can be leftovers for a different part of the day you know though we ain't gonna be over righteous you know it is what it is but it says you should eat it with your loins girded and your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and you should eat it in haste it is the lord's passover okay so this is the way you supposed to observe passover okay you ain't got time to to, to take no fucking uh, uh, meals or no no bottle girls or you ain't got time to be listening to no debates. And, you know, we in the mindset of getting delivered out of Egypt. But yet you got men talking about, oh, well, we're going to celebrate my one year, the, my anniversary of debate at such and such. Like, what kind of madness is this? OK, we ain't going to have no orders coming around how you want your lamb. You want a well done or rare. You want some sprinkle sauce on it or you want a side of bitter herb. But we ain't doing all that. We ain't got time for that, man. We're in the mindset that the Lord is getting ready to level this bitch. Okay, you're going to see that all these men in Israel that took this high holy day lightly, you're going to see that the Lord is going to start to weed them out, man. You know, these other groups and these other camps. Hey, the Lord is going to start to do away with a lot of these men, man, that call themselves leaders and chief high priests. You know, uh, uh, eating the Passover and luxury. You got bottle girls. So you got gr For one thing, man, you go into a particular place. Uh, let's just say now we don't know if you got sisters serving these brothers or whatever. We don't know, but I'm sure that all those waitresses at this big place or at this particular um, what do you call it place that they're getting ready to rent this shit out, whatever this hall they're renting. I'm sure that the cooks there are not believers. Okay, so they shouldn't even be there in the first place. You know, so that's another thing too. Then you may say, well, because we got so many members, well, it's your job as a leader to show that Israel slacks in their duty. You, it's your job as a leader to make sure your men are built up, okay? Like, when you look at the apostles, yeah, GMS, we are a pretty big camp, okay? We got a lot of members, but see, our elders and the apostles, they taught us these things, and they told our men to be studious in order to be able to teach these things to younger men, okay? It ain't just a group of followers and a group of yes men looking up to one fucking nigga. And this is the reason why most of them guys, they don't understand how to keep this thing because their leaders don't teach them. Everybody in my camp should be able to do the Passover service without me being there. Even if I say, you know what, brothers, we're going to do it our own this year. Y'all stay home and do it. Brothers are going to know how to do it. They got the prayers. They understand the ceremony and be done with it. You know, ain't nobody not. Hey, can I take your order out? Nah, hell nah, man. We ain't in that spirit. And this is why the Lord always bless us with chariots on the Passover because we, we keep these things in sincerity. You know, but anyway. It says, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beasts. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment for I am Yahweh. So this is the mindset we're supposed to be in, brothers. Not playing games. Not We ain't got time to be taking orders, man. And yeah, realistically speaking, you could say, well, America ain't, ain't destroyed yet. And yeah, you're absolutely right. But what if the Lord decides to bring the death angel in Babylon at night? What if they decide to shut down by, hey, we know what happened in 2020 at the past over the shutdowns came, you know, so you can't take the, the you can't take the, the, that's that scripture in Peter's when it says that uh, all things remain as the beginning, because basically they put off the coming of, the, of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai is going to come as a thief in the night, man, and we're expecting it. And it says, and a blood should be into you for a token upon the houses where ye are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you. To destroy you when I smite all the land of Egypt. So the Lord gave us simple instructions to not get destroyed. It's simple, man. He just told Israelites to do this. If he see the blood, he was going to recognize you. Okay, bam. Here we go. And it says, and all this day should be a memorial, uh, should be unto you for a memorial. And you should keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. And you should keep it as a feast by ordinance forever, man. Meaning everything, every letter. In seven days, you should eat unleavened bread. So this is all in one and the same ceremony. When the Passover come, 
Having your mindset, well, yeah, this is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, it's the same thing. When somebody mentions Passover, think Feast of Unleavened Bread. When somebody mentions Feast of Unleavened Bread, think Passover. So have all the leaven out of your house by Passover. And honestly speaking, if you're smart, you'll probably start getting rid of a lot of that shit this week. If you ain't going to use it. You know? Now, if you're cooking with certain flowers and things like that, then do what you do. But it's good to start clearing out some of those things and looking through your cabinets and get... Get rid of it. And I notice every year it's less and less yeast in my house. You know, I noticed that. And most brothers have that same testimony. But it says seven days you should eat unleavened bread, even the first day when you should put away leaven out of your house. For whosoever eateth the leavened bread from the first day into the seventh day, that soul should be cut off from Israel, man. Okay, so that's the point. So it says in the first day there should be a holy convocation. And then the seventh day, there should be a holy convocation unto you, which is a Shabbat or a Sabbath. And no manner of work should be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. And ye shall observe the Feast of Unleavened Bread, for this is the selfsame day have I bought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by ordinance forever, man. Okay? And this is why he keeps repeating it, because Jake gets simple. So in the first month, on the 14th day of month at evening, you shall eat, it says you should eat unleavened bread until, it says, you should eat unleavened bread until the 1 and 20th day of the month at evening. So 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So the seventh day going into the eighth day, which will be next Saturday would be the 14th day of evening, which is the Passover. And then from Saturday evening to Sunday to Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday to Thursday to Friday to Saturday to Sunday, okay? So technically, you can't eat leavened bread until the next following Shabbat on that Saturday after the Passover. So let me repeat that. So next week is the Passover, right? So you're not eating, uh, you're not eating unleavened bread the night of the Passover. You're not eating it Sunday. You're not eating it Monday. You're not eating it Tuesday. You're not eating it Wednesday. You're not eating it Thursday. You're not eating it Friday. Nor are you eating it early Saturday, but once the Shabbat comes in and we're out of the ceremony, then you can eat leavened bread after the seven day going into the eighth day, if that make any sense. OK, so just to kind of clarify that. And it says seven days, there should be no leaven found in your houses for whosoever who shall eat, which is leaven, even of that soul should be cut off from the congregation. And of Israel, whether he be a stranger or is born in the land. And ye should eat nothing leaven in all your habitations, shall ye eat unleavened bread. Okay? So this would be a good time, too, for brothers, man, to do a candida cleanse, too, man. Um, Actually, myself, I'm actually going to get started on this candida parasite. Well, this candida parasite cleans next week. And basically, when you're doing a candida cleanse, you're, cleaning, you, you, you're cutting out yeast anyway. You know, anything like yeast or, or, or like a... Certain carbs and all that other stuff. You're really getting rid of that stuff out of your system, too. So be a good time to incorporate a cleaning, you know, to, to start the year off in the right spirit to prepare your minds to deal with the collapse of the society. Because just my personal opinion, I believe once this Passover is said and done, I believe the Lord is going to bring a collapse to this place this year, man. OK, we just have to wait and see. But nonetheless, I believe the Lord is getting ready to make some moves in the coming weeks, <laughs> if not days. But. With that, all praises and glory and honor that's due to you. How about you?